Hello, lovely humans. Jen Foxpot here, and welcome to STEM Bites Day, where we tackle your seemingly simple questions about science, tech, engineering, and math. All right. Today's question comes from our lovely friend, da, 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 Mama Llama. Yay! Mama Llama's got a lot of questions. So, what's up, Mama Llama? What is your question? Well, I would like to know what in the world is integral calculus and why does it seem so hard? Ah! I know, right? Mama Llama loves knowing about mathematics. So, thank you. That's good timing because integral calculus is what comes after derivative calculus. Just in the same way that division is the opposite of multiplication, integral calculus is the opposite of derivative calculus. And just like derivative calculus, it is also super helpful. Woo! I am a big fan of understanding how to get to certain formulas and integral calculus lets me be lazy because instead of having to memorize formulas for area and volume, I can derive them with the power of integral calculus. So how do you do that? Let's check it out. I am gonna use a brand new giant piece of white chalk, which I'm really excited about because all my other chalk is little teeny tiny pieces. Still useful, but breaking out a new chalk for integral calculus video. Okay, so let's tie this to the real world. Let's say that you are trying to figure out how much space your furry friend has in your yard to run around. And you have a yard, you go out and you measure, because we are good mathematicians and scientists, we are going to label our axes. This is going to be in meters. Again, sorry, I need a little better. Um, and then I'm going to call this f of x. This could also be y. We will see why. <laughs> Sorry, bad pun. I'm calling this f of x later. Um, but if you want, you can just be like, that's effectively the same thing as y. And again, this is going to be in meters. So let's say you go out into your yard and you measure one, two meters. Oh, wah, wah. That's okay. Let's keep going. <laughs> okay. So you measure two meters. And then your yard looks like this. Hold on. Where we're going to go one, two, three, four. And then your yard looks like this. Oh, okay, okay. It's going to be a triangle. I swear it's going to be a triangle. There we go. We made it work. Okay, it's a funny triangle. So if you want to be lazy and you look at the shape of your yard and you're like, wait a second, this f of x actually is on a straight line. Maybe you got this from the map of your yard or something like that, and it was easier to measure or something. You're like, I don't wanna walk four meters. I wanna be lazy. So I am just gonna use the fact that this line right here, <gasps> let's use a different color. Ooh, purple, I only use purple. Mama Llama likes purple, and so does Jen Bachmann. Okay, so you measure this line, and it is of the equation 2x. Cool. So then you can break out your integral calculus. Integral calculus uses this really cute long S. And in general, you say f of x, and you're taking the integral with respect to some variable. So just like in derivative calculus, where we have an operator of d dx, um, this operator can be with respect to different variables. You could have d dy, et cetera. The point is that is a, um, it is basically um, a concept that we have defined to mean a specific thing in mathematics. So just like we have, we have defined this shape to be plus um, or this shape to be minus, we have defined in integral calculus dx to be a specific type of operator. In other words, it does a thing to the numbers or variable variables around it. Just like the plus sign tells us how to add two numbers together, this dx tells us how to take the integral um, of this function. And the key piece that changes is this variable here. So we are taking the integral with respect to x. And this is why I wanted to write f of x. You also could put y here if you wanted to. 
You could say y equals 2x, that's totally fine. Variables are just placeholders. But the point is that at some point you have to replace y with x if you can, because we are taking the integral with respect to x. So what, what is, how do we do that? Well, we know what f of x is, right? We know what y is. And so we just replace it. So this would become the integral of 2x dx. And that we can solve. Holy stars, I wrote very up. Anyway, okay. So typically when we take an integral, we are taking the integral from some point to another point. And in this case, because we want to find how big this area is, we want to take the integral from zero, where we measured the length of our yard, to two meters. And so we put zero here, we put two meters here. And now we can take the integral. And so this is where there is a little bit of memorization, so sorry, but it's really about memorizing the derivative part and those rules, they will come with practice. And so what you do is you apply derivative in reverse. So if you think about how would you get 2x um, if you apply it in reverse? And you're like, wait, what? That's really funky. I don't get it. So what you end up with is 1 half times 2x squared um, from 0 to 2 meters. And if you think about it, so if you take the derivative of 2x squared, Let's do this in purple in parentheses, or we can do it in brackets. So if you take d dx of 2x squared, what you get is, um, oh, sorry, uh, just x squared. There we go, because 1 half times 2, I was like, this isn't going to work at all. Um, yes, if you finish solving this, what you're going to get is just x squared, because 1 half times 2 is just 1. So my messy finger erasing there. So if you take the derivative with respect to x of x squared, you are going to get 2x. Boom. Hey, check that out. Look at that. We did it in reverse. Yay. So that's a good way if you are learning integral calculus and you're like, I don't know if I did it right. You can always check your work, which I loved doing when I was um, taking tests and I was like a little nervous. I would just be like, let me just really quickly check this. Very helpful to do that. Okay. So we checked our work. And we're like, heck yeah, the derivative of 2x is x squared. Now we apply um, the integrand, basically where we, we are taking the integral from. And that means that we plug these numbers in. So we say 2 meters squared, and then we subtract uh, from the initial point. So final minus initial. And we are going from 0 to 2. So 2 meters is our final, 0 is our starting point. And so we just um, subtract 0 squared, and this is going to be 4 meters squared. Ta-da! And the reason why I was like, let's do a triangle shape, is because, y'all, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. And the reason why I was like, this should be 4. Um, so pretend my tick marks get you to 4. Um, so then if we were to plug in, we get 1 half base is two meters long and the height is um, four meters. Let's say you walked this line and you measured four meters. Hey, look at that. You're going to get two times four is eight times one half. You're going to get four meters squared. <gasps> hey, it's the same thing. Look at that. It's so handy. And I know you're like, okay, okay. I could walk that. I don't need, I don't need this funky f of x shenanigans. I can measure this. And also, excuse me, I know the area of a triangle. Yes, yes, you're very smart. And I know that. And that's why I wanted to give you a simple example to start with. But now let's say we have a really funky yard. Okay. Let's say that we have this space that is like this. My axes or ignore the numbers on there. We're going to keep the meters of units. And let's say what you are given on your plot of land explainer, there is a name for that, but 
blanking because I'm in math mode right now and not house mode. Um, but let's say that you were given a function by some funky surveyor who was like, well, the boundary of your house is given by um, x squared. So good luck, good sir. And then they drop their hat and they disappear. And you're like, were you a wizard? What are you doing? Um, so you still, you pace to your yard and you still find that the width of your yard is two meters. But now all of a sudden the boundary is super funky. And you're like, how much space do I have for my furry friend? Do I have space for a dog or a bunny? I need to figure this out. And so what you can do is use integral calculus to solve the problem. Yay. Okay. So we are going to do the same thing, but with a slightly more complicated function. So check this out. We're going to use our handy dandy white chalk. So again, we're going to take the derivative, sorry, <laughs> we're going to take the integral, oh, so silly, of f of x. And so we plug in what f of x equals. So then this goes to, um, this is x squared. We are taking the integral of x squared with respect to x. That is our variable that we are taking the integral of and then um, same thing, we plug in the distance um, of the integrand, so from 0 to 2 meters. Uh, by the way, this is the integrand. That is an operator, the integral operator. Um, that also, I should say, in addition to this dx that we have defined to mean something in mathematics, the integrand is an operator that acts on the things inside of it. So you can kind of think about this as being like some parentheses and the integrand operates on the things that come after it. And the dx tells you how to take the integrand. It's a little bit extra information, which is super handy. Okay, so now we take the integral of x squared dx. And again, we are going backwards. So you think in your head, you're like, if I were to take the derivative of a function, what would it look like to give me x squared. So you're kind of like, yeah, you know, you're, you're flip it and reverse it. So like, um, just like, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit funky at first, but the more you practice it, the easier it gets. So like when I see x squared, I'm like, oh, if I were to take the derivative of a function x cubed, that would get me to x squared. However, I'm also missing a little number out front. So that would mean that I have to have a one third here, one third x cubed. And again, we're going to go from zero to two meters and let's check. Let's check our numbers. I'm going to do this in red because it's a little bit different. Um, so if I were to take d dx of one third x cubed, I would get the, the cube comes down. So it would be um, three times one third. So three over three and x squared. And then these cancel to one. Yay, look at that we end up with just x squared. Boom. Check. Checked our work. We're going to ace that test. You got this. Okay. So now that we've checked that our integrand was right, that our integral was right, now we can apply the numbers. And so we go 1 third times 2 cubed minus 1 third times 0 cubed. This just goes to 0. And this is going to equal one third uh, times two cubed, which is eight. So this is going to be eight thirds meters squared. Oops, this should be meters, meters cubed. Um, hmm. That should be, anyway, that should be meters squared. Okay, we'll get to that. Well, check, check my work somewhere. Okay. Um, so uh, this is going to give you the area. Oop, wrong color. This is going to give you the area under the curve. And so then you can be like, is this enough space for a bunny rabbit? Is this enough space for, I don't know, a gardener snake or something? Whatever little furry friend or reptile friend that you want to um, have hang out in that space, you can use this information to figure out what kind of pet would best fit. Ha, okay, great. So that is integral calculus. And that is partly why it is super duper cool. So you can really just extend this to super complicated functions so that you can find the area under the curve for things that would be really difficult to go out and measure. You know, you can think about curves that are super silly and wild. So things like this that you're like, I am not going to go and pace that. No, thank you. I'm going to end. If your brain is melting out of your brain, that's 
uh, as of your head, that is totally fine. I get it. If you want to stick around, let's learn what we are actually doing. So what does this operator mean? What does this DX mean? Okay, take a break, take a deep breath. Okay, so what DX means is that we are summing up we are summing up the function f of x over uh, uh, from the beginning to the end or over some distance. And if this is not defined, then you assume that we are summing from negative infinity to infinity. And you're like, what? That's fine. We can do another video on that if you're curious. Um, but let's focus on a tangible, um, something that's tangible and a little easier to think about. So really, you're just, you're summing up from a certain starting point to a certain ending point, and you are finding the area under that curve, f of x. And so dx basically is just like, you're breaking this curve into teeny tiny little rectangles, and you are summing up slowly um, over this distance. You can actually do this. So if you break up a curve into small enough rectangles, you can approximate the curve. And that's what a lot of people did before calculus, because calculus was invented to help us solve problems more easily. So there are people that were doing this, they were like, I really need to find this area, it's super important, but this is funky. And so they were making these um, rectangle approximations. I'm gonna use a different color because that's kind of hard to see. So they would be like, this is kind of right. But what you'll notice is that there's some space in, there's some gaps here. So it will be close enough, you know, if you're like building a fence or something, um, or if you need to know how much seed to plant, then you're like, yeah, oh, that's good enough. There can be some little gaps. But if you want to get it exactly right, you can use integral calculus. Boom. All right. So I hope that that is helpful. I know the integral calculus can be a little bit intimidating, but just like anything in mathematics, it's just a language. It's all about learning what uh, those pieces mean, what these symbols mean, and then just practicing. Practice and check your answers and ask for help if you need to. Yay, all right. Um, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.